Coming up in today's Wrestle Talk news, Chris Jericho hospitalized overseas, the latest on Johnny Gargano, a major blow to Ring of Honor's final battle, and more. Subscribe for daily wrestling news and enable notification to always on so you know when they go live. Support Wrestle Talk! Chris Jericho hasn't been on AEW for the last few weeks of television after being attacked by 2.0 to write him off. This was because the former AEW champion was over here in the United Kingdom, doing dates across England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales with his band Fozzy. They were set to play in Swansea tonight before coming back into England to play Nottingham and London. However, the Swansea venue Sin City posted to Facebook that they were informed the gig would be cancelled because Jericho was in hospital. Chris was checked into hospital by doctors with a non-COVID related treatable health issue. Regrettably, the show on Friday in Swansea is cancelled and all tickets will be refunded. We'll have updates on Saturday's show in Nottingham and Sunday's show in London as soon as possible. The venue added, we wish Chris an incredibly speedy recovery. We very much hope that he and the band are able to complete their UK tour and return safely to their families for Christmas. While there is no official word on what the non-COVID issue was, Jericho himself seems to be A-OK. -okay. He had posted on Instagram earlier in the day a photo of him and the band outside Hard Rock Cafe in London, and last night was retweeting fan appreciation tweets about Fozzie's tour, his Winnipegers podcast, and the fact that it's been 20 years since he beat The Rock and Steve Austin on the same night to become the first undisputed champion at Vengeance 2001. Off topic, but my favourite thing about Vengeance 2001 is that the poster for it is Triple H posing with his sledgehammer, despite the fact that he isn't on the show in any capacity. Figure 4 Online noted while he is sick, it's not considered serious and he may still be fine to perform on Saturday and Sunday. Whatever the case, we here at WrestleTalk are sending love and positive vibes to Chris Jericho and hope for a speedy recovery. And the same can be said for Jeff Hardy, who was released from WWE yesterday. Holly Davis has already covered a lot of this in yesterday's breaking news video that he put out yesterday evening. But to quickly recap, Hardy was sent home from a WWE house show earlier this week after a rough night. And yesterday, Sean Ross Sapp revealed that WWE had released him from the company, adding, I've heard WWE offered Jeff Hardy help and rehab, and it was not accepted. Hardy's wife, Beth, tweeted that Jeff is good, while Matt Hardy revealed on Twitter that his brother was at home and I think he'll be fine. We here at WrestleTalk wish Jeff Hardy all the best. Addiction is a hell of a beast to overcome and you've never really overcome it in some cases. As always, I urge you to visit our Support Each Other page for numbers that you can call if this is something that affects you personally. We've linked to that in the video description down below. And it's not just us here at WrestleTalk that are wishing the best for Jeff Hardy. Following the news of Hardy's release, his former co-workers in WWE took to Twitter to share their love and adoration for him. Bailey said, The Hardys gave 12-year-old me so much hope to live a dream that seemed so out of reach. We all love you, Jeff. You're so special and only wish the absolute best for you. While United States Champion Damian Priest added, I think the world of Jeff Hardy. Nothing but positive thoughts and well wishes to this good, kind soul. Current WWE Champion Big E was the first to speak publicly about Hardy since his firing, tweeting, Jeff Hardy is so beloved by his fans and his peers, I've never heard a negative word about him and he always treated me with such kindness, just wishing him and his family the very best. And it's wild to think that it was just a few weeks ago that Jeff was the final guy for Team Smackdown at Survivor Series and you know, he was getting such a good reaction, a great reaction from the crowd that it almost seemed like he was destined for a Universal Championship program with Roman Reigns. I think Dave Meltzer put it best in his review in the Wrestling Observer newsletter when he said, even though Hardy is the single least pushed of the 10 guys in the match, he was the most over to the crowd. Mustafa Ali also tweeted about Hardy's work ethic, saying, I got to compete against Jeff Hardy on main events. I made the assumption that Jeff was gonna take it easy. Jeff says, nah, man, I've been waiting for this match. Let's tear this shit up. He was incredibly giving. I sincerely hope for the best for Jeff and his family. Do you know what? Why don't you leave your favorite Jeff Hardy moments in the comments? comments and your well wishes as well down below. I'll be replying to people when this video goes live. But perhaps the most talked about thing in all of pro wrestling this week has been the future of Johnny Gargano in WWE. Last Sunday, his appearance in War Games against NXT 2.0 was heavily pushed on commentary to be his final match for the brand, and Gargano gave an emotional farewell on this past Tuesday's episode of NXT before being attacked by Grayson Waller. In our review of War Games on the WrestleTalk podcast channel, I said that because WWE were 
pushing the idea that it was his final match and they were promoting the farewell speech, that it led me to think that he was probably going to stay with the company, especially as he was attacked by Wallet to set up a return match when he came back from paternity leave. And it looks like I was wrong. Not the first time, won't be the last. Fightful Select have learned that Gargano's contract has now expired and he has not signed a new deal. He is now officially a free agent and can appear on any television program he chooses as he does not have a non-compete clause. Fightful write Gargano has been private about his decision backstage, but some knew that his contract was coming up as far back as a year ago. We're told that WWE made repeated offers to sign Gargano to a new deal over the past few weeks, but Gargano opted for free agency. But what were those offers like? Thanks for your support on Patreon. He's a sexy man. Sexy man. Not an Andrew Gross man. And the cleaner Kenny Shah. You can get your own WrestleTalk bumper shoutouts by going to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk. Fightful Select are reporting that the offer WWE made to Gargano was much better than the deal offered in 2019 when WWE moved NXT to the USA Network, which Gargano and several other top NXT names passed on. According to Fightful Select, the split was incredibly amicable and the door was left open by both sides to work together in the future. WWE were also reportedly very happy with how the Grayson Waller attack came across on TV. Sap also added on Twitter that he's working on a story for the latest on Kyle O'Reilly, who also appears to be leaving NXT following his cage match loss to Von Wagner this past Tuesday. While I still do think Gargano will end up back in WWE next year, there is a spot that has just opened up for him at Ring of Honor's final battle. In a crushing blow for their final pay-per-view before their hiatus until next April, Ring of Honor have announced that ROH world champion Bandido has tested positive for COVID-19 and has been pulled from his title match against Jonathan Gresham for tomorrow night. ROH wrote, unfortunately, Ring of Honor world champion Bandido returned a positive result on his most recent COVID testing and will not be present at final battle this Saturday, December 11th in Baltimore. Thank you for continuously supporting Ring of Honor through it all. And we appreciate your understanding that safety and health of our talent, staff and fans are our top priorities. Stay tuned for match updates regarding final battle 2021 as we commemorate the history-making era that is coming to an end. At the time of this recording, no replacement match has been announced, but we here at WrestleTalk wish Bandido a speedy recovery. Someone who will be on the show, however, is Shane Taylor, as he takes on Kenny King in a fight without honor match. And Taylor will also be joining myself and Tempest on the WrestleTalk podcast later today to talk about Final Battle, what's next for him, and what's next for Shane Taylor Promotions. Finally, bumping AEW Dynamite for NHL games on TNT, has continued to funk up their numbers since October, with this week's show pulling in 872,000 viewers and a 0.33 in the all-important 18 to 49 demo. Now, while both of those are slightly up from last week, it still can be seen as a disappointment, because this past Monday's Raw drew a new record low in the 18 to 49 demo of a 0.35 against strong football competition. It was speculated and pretty much assumed that this week's Dynamite could see them get a victory, but it was not the case. As Meltzer put it on Twitter, they did beat Raw in the males 18-49, but did not with teenagers, which I thought was a lock after Raw's numbers on Monday. Also, it was our work Christmas party last night, which I didn't attend because I came home to be D.A.D., but I did get this video of what I missed from Chopper Pete. There you go! There you go! I do love those idiots. Um, See, so, yeah, so this is tremendously exciting. Particularly for me, Daredevil is my guy. Yeah. He's always been my favorite comic book character. So this is the greatest bit of news I could possibly get. And also, like I, I the other small screen stuff that they did, I really liked what they did with Jessica Jones and what they did with Luke Cage as well. And Feige- Not Iron Fist? 